Hey, welcome back to my YouTube channel, guys. Today we're going to talk about how to move to New Zealand. And I'm gonna share my story on how my family came to New Zealand. It's something that I shared like way back, like my first video. So I thought it's probably good for a refresh to kind of share how we came about coming here and then how you can work on moving to New Zealand. Here we go. Welcome to my channel, I'm glad you're here. If you're not familiar with this channel, we are a family of six that have moved to New Zealand from the US and have been here for six years. We have not been here for six years consecutively, so we came here for two years, we went back to the States for two years, and now we've been back here for four years, going on five years. So yeah, after five years of being permanent residents and living here consecutively, we can apply for citizenship this year. So that's exciting. Um, anyway, so I just thought I'd share a little bit about our story and then a little bit about what it takes, kind of your first steps in moving to New Zealand. I get this question so many times. And so we're gonna just start dealing with all of these questions now. So a little bit about us is, why did we come to New Zealand? What was the process for us? Well, basically, we just wanted to give our kids like an international experience. We know that, you know, America is the greatest country on earth <laughs> and that there's no reason to leave it. As so we were taught so many times, but we just thought, hey, let's just get out. Let's get an experience. Our kids were, I had four kids um, from two to 11 years old at the time. And we came here uh, and it was just easier with younger kids and it was English speaking. And that's part of why we chose it. And we didn't know anything. We didn't know anybody. But I did do lots of research. In fact, I was driving back from Florida to Wisconsin and it was such a long drive that I just Googled New Zealand the whole ride, just reading anything and everything. And the interesting fact is that I could not find one bad thing about New Zealand. And I'm like, what is this place? Is this like paradise? You know, like you're always familiar. I think Americans are very familiar with Australia, but New Zealand is like, mm, some know, some don't, you know, but it's not, you know, it's popular, I'd say, in talk uh, as Australia. But so you're just like, okay, what is this place? There's one lady that did complain, but I think it was more, she was the issue, just reading other things that she wrote. <laughs> anyway, so what is this place? I have no idea. We don't know anybody here. We've never been here. We're gonna move our whole family here for two years for an experience. Let's go. Are we crazy? Yes. Are we glad we did it? So, yes. Very much so. Um, so we came here and we settled in and we kind of had the attitude of, we just want to experience anything and everything New Zealand. We thought this was our only time coming here. And so we traveled every weekend. We would just jump in the car, grab some food and just took the kids and explored, explored. We saw most of New Zealand. We did pretty good <laughs> in two years. Um, just, you know, didn't get to really enjoy all these places, but we definitely made it and saw all of them. And so that was really wonderful. And we, um, yeah, we just we really loved it here. In fact, I'd say I was surprised at how much I really loved it, you know, and the way that they do things. Of course, it's different, um, but it really, as an American, wasn't a huge adjustment. It's definitely different, but it's not like vastly different where it's hard to adjust. So of course, you know, I was most nervous about driving on the left side of the road, really was no big deal with the roundabouts, surprisingly easy. Um, you know, and then just slowly kind of integrating the culture. So I had my kids in school. I had, uh, I got a job, my husband worked and we just tried to do, you know, all these different things. Like, let's just see what it's like here. What's it like to go to an interview? Let's say, you know, so it's always good if you're going to go to another country to kind of have that attitude of willingness to try new things. Okay. Don't come to a country and just be like, I'm just going to eat what I like to eat and do what I like to do. You know, try new things, make new friends, go to places, get involved in things. And that's how you really start to connect. And so we had a wonderful time, uh, but we had only planned to come for two years. So we had went back to the US, no intention of ever coming back to New Zealand, would really like to, it was really hard to leave. In fact, we had to take kind of a long trip to Southeast Asia, but we went to the US just to kind of deal with all of the feelings. Um, and so we, got home and it's always great to be home and with family. And you know, for us, the U S is home. It feels like home. Okay. And so 
you know, we got reintegrated into our community and the kids back in school and just doing all the things. And it was really nice. Definitely missed New Zealand. Was trying to figure out a way where I could come, you know, maybe once a year. I don't know. I don't know. I just was like, it was so great. We had such a good experience. But then um, my husband, through this whole situation, like I'm probably not gonna go into it for the length of this video, <laughs> but he ended up getting this job offer that was like amazing. And we were like, oh my gosh, we are not moving our whole family again across the world. I think we're legit crazy for considering it. <laughs> but we just were really like, oh my gosh, it's just like the most amazing job. Like he literally like what happened was is when he came back to the US, he changed kind of what he was doing completely. And then we, when he got a job offer here, it was like a couple steps up where he could probably, it would take a while in the US to get that. And, and it was in a new area that he was interested in. And it was in Wellington where we loved. And it was like, oh my gosh. So um, needless to say, we decided to come back. And now we've been here for four years. And it's definitely a different mind shift. It's definitely a different mind shift to move from, coming here temporarily than to coming here permanently and setting up roots here. And it's it's definitely different. I found the stress is different. We moved more things. We, you know, like where your kids are getting settled in school was more important. You know, your community was suddenly more important because I didn't have any family here. It, everything was just like, it wasn't just like a fun experience, like an extra long vacation. It was like, okay, now we're serious, right? And so, uh, yeah, so that was really, you know, different. And I think it took me a little bit longer and it was a, definitely a mindset shift for us, for sure. So it was good. We um, obviously still, we really like it here. We, I mean, New Zealand is just such a wonderful place and I would highly recommend if you can visit here, move here for a couple of years, do what we did. I highly recommend it. It was just a really wonderful experience because part of the reason why I wanted to come here was, you know, just, close family time and I definitely got that. I got way more than I was even expecting. Like just bonding because when your family moves to another country together, all you have is each other. And so your relationships get stronger. You're all kind of going through the same thing together at the same time and that's very unusual because you have kids, like if you stay in one spot, all your kids are different ages and different grades starting to get into their own world and it's hard to connect, right? So you can go on like a week vacation, but it's just like a week, but like connecting and like learning cultural things or somebody said this and I learned this and it's just, we're all kind of going through at the same time. It's very unique and I highly recommend it, especially if you have kids around the ages that I had when I first came that was really the best time um, because when I came the second time, my oldest was like 16. So it was a little bit harder, but that's a different story. <laughs> um, but everybody is great. I mean, all my kids loved it here. And so it wasn't like a hard like, oh, you know, they they know they loved it here. But obviously, you know, it's hard to leave again and to make that kind of decision. But it's really a wonderful place to raise a family and a wonderful place with the work life balance, the health insurance, uh, the beauty. Okay, the untouched, just kind of the ease of life, the low stress, like all of these things um, not only impact like your quality of daily life, but also just um, raising a family and just like kind of being in an environment that you want to be. Sometimes you'll find, and I think I've talked about this before, um, sometimes you'll find that you find more of yourself in a different environment, which could be a different country or it could be a different state or territory or wherever you're from, right? So like if you go into a, an environment that just feels more like you, it can make you happier. It can make you more comfortable. Anyway, that's a whole, all the stuff that we could talk about. But in addition to just telling you my story, I just wanted to talk to you about some of the processes in moving to New Zealand because I get this question so many times and I don't mind it. It's okay to ask me, <laughs> um, but uh, I, let's just kind of talk a little bit about this. So if you are thinking about moving to New Zealand, meaning like whether it's temporary, like just for a year or two um, or more permanently, where do you start, right? What's the first step, okay? And so this is what I'm gonna tell you. The first step, number one, is you need to figure out what visa makes sense for you, okay? What visa makes sense for you? Now, I am not allowed to give immigration advice to you, uh, and that's fine. And I'm not giving you, I'm just telling you where to start. I would go to the New Zealand immigration site. I would look at everything. 
and I would figure out what visa you want and what visa you qualify for because there's point systems depending on which visa you're going for and what country you're coming from. And what I, what I would say about this is that the New Zealand immigration site has everything that you need to know. We did not use like immigration lawyer or any outside source. We literally just applied to come here through the New Zealand immigration site. And, and that was fine. And we did fine with that. We just felt like it was very well done. The Australian one is very similar. So if you want to go there, that was also e easy, I think, to navigate and to figure out. And so uh, I, that's really all you need. You really just need the immigration site. Now, depending on your situation or kind of what you're comfortable with, an immigration lawyer or consultant may make sense for you. And in the description below, I'll put somebody that I recommend for that. Um, you could at least call them and talk them through if it makes sense for you guys to work together, um, just because that can be helpful if that makes sense for you. But most of the information you're gonna need are just is just on uh, New Zealand immigration site, and it's really great and really thorough, I think. And it's gonna be most up to date. So due to COVID and the crazy world that we live in now, it's always changing. <laughs> and so you don't always know what, you know, I can't tell you like, this is how you do it because it's always changing and it might be out of date by the time you watch this video. Anyway, so a couple things to keep an eye out in terms of the immigration site is pay attention to the short list. So start there. Is your qualification, what you do for a living shortlisted? And what that means is that New Zealand doesn't have enough people with those skills here in the country. And so they're looking outside of their country for it. And then there's even like an essential skills. So essential skills are like, we're desperate. We need these skills. Either we don't train for it here or we don't have enough people for the amount of demand we have here. And those are essential. So if you're on the essential skills list, I think you're in luck <laughs> because it's much easier to get in. They, if you, if you get, apply that way, then uh, you can get in easier and they'll kind of source you a job and you kind of work together uh, with somebody on that. And so that's really good. But if you're on the short list, also very good. If you're not on either of those lists in terms of your job, that's fine. It doesn't mean that you can't apply, right? But it's going to take a while. So just to tell you our story is we came in on the skilled migrant visa and it took us about a year and a half. So plan on the process taking a while, okay, for one. This isn't a fast process, okay? So if you're even mildly thinking about moving here, just maybe consider doing the expression of interest so that you can get um, everything rolling because it can take a while. And then worst case scenario, if you decide that that's not something that you wanna do, then that's okay too, then you don't need to. So yeah, that's where I would start definitely. Um, and then the other thing is, is you know, some visas are gonna be easier to get here, but maybe you won't have all of the benefits of here and that's okay, like just get here and get it figured out and get it sorted. But if you have a family, you know, you probably wanna kinda get certain ducks in a row in order for that to happen. So those are kind of the, the basics of getting your visa. So go to the New Zealand immigration site and that's where you start. That's how I would start the process, figure out how you can actually live and work here. If you just wanna travel here, that's different. So depending on what country that you're coming from, depends on how long you can stay here with the passport that you have. So the US passport, I believe you can stay here for two or three months. You'll have to double check because it's probably updated. Um, you know, a Canadian passport or, uh, you know, a Mexican passport, like, I don't know, they'll give you like how much you can just travel around, but you won't be able to work. So obviously if you wanna come for a year's time, at least you're gonna wanna work, um, you know, unless you have enough money to just travel around. New Zealand's expensive, so keep that in mind, um, but it's all worth it. The second step, if you're thinking about moving here, is the job search. Now, it isn't like you do the visa first and then the job, I would do them hand in hand. Okay, so you're gonna be looking through your visa, you're gonna start your visa application, then I would start applying for work as well. Now, you're gonna be frustrated with the job situation unless you're on the short list or the essentials, essential skills list because they're actively looking for you and that's different. But uh, if you're not on those lists, you're gonna be frustrated because it's a bit of a catch-22 because you're gonna see all these job ads like, are you allowed to, to work permanently in New Zealand, yes or no? And so it's like, you can't apply for the job unless you have a visa, but you can't get a visa until you have a job. 
So it's like that. <laughs> so like if you can get a job that can speed up your visa process. Okay. But, um, yeah, so keep that in mind, but it's a good idea to start applying maybe talking to some people, seeing what makes sense. A lot of times you'll find that there's different words that they use for things. I um, am a professor at the university and the words that they use for things are so different. And so miscommunication can happen, right? Because the words are different. So for example, in my industry, like taking a course is called a paper. You know, I never would have made that connection, you know, and then just like just a lot of the words that they use is very different. And so, you know, finding that out, understanding the jargon in the industry that you're in will be helpful. And then you can also reach out to me because I do have like some CV and interviewing help. If you need that, we can get your CV, you know, with all the the correct things uh, that would appeal to New Zealand and just kind of talk through what you have on your CV and if this makes sense and kind of what they're looking for. Because the job description in New Zealand will give you a clear idea on what they're looking for. But what I'm saying is some of the words won't make sense to you because you're like, okay, I don't know what that means. They use different things. And so I've just, sometimes I've noticed because I've worked with clients on this and they're just, they're kind of missing it because the words are different. So, you know, email me or reach out to me, make an appointment with me. I'm happy to help you with that. Um, but yeah, so do the job and the immigration at the same time. My recommendation for you is to take a job wherever you can get it. Don't decide, I want to move to Wellington. I want to move to Auckland. I want to move to the South Island. It's, I'm just going to be frank. It is not easy to get into this country. It is not easy. So let's just start at the immigration and the job, and then we'll move into where your options are gonna be. There is a part on the immigration site where you can see the job, the shortlisted job. So, but if you are on essential skills and shortlisted, you can pick your region a little bit easier um, and then where you wanna go. And then, and then you have to decide where you wanna go. Now, of course you can read all about it. Everything is on the internet, right? Uh, but I'm happy to talk to you about that as well. Talk through the different areas. I haven't lived in every area. I have been to every area though. And um, I can help you with that and just kind of understanding the school system if you have kids or understanding you know, what might matter to you in terms of finding housing, in terms of what the lifestyle would look like. You know, So you can reach out to me for that. I'm just gonna put my website address. It's always in uh, the description anyway, where I can help you with um, any of these kinds of things. Um, I have a consulting business that I do that. So I hope this was helpful. I hope that you're seeing that kind of that's where you need to start because there's no point in really talking about too much after that <laughs> because all of that will depend on the first two things, okay? So as we're moving into 2022, things are opening up, travel is opening up and it's going to be sooner rather than later that people can come in here. They announced this week that MIQ is no longer necessary as long as you have a negative test. And so you can kind of come right. So everything's going to change quite quickly. And so I'm very excited for you guys to apply to come here or just visit or to move here and, and all of the excitement around that. But I wanted to bring to your attention something that I think will be really helpful. If you are thinking about moving here um, or even traveling, this would actually be helpful as well. Or if you're already here, this would be helpful. I'm going to be creating uh, like, a, like a membership area on my website where I'm going to be doing all of these trainings for you. If you've talked to me, I've met a lot of people and it's really been picking up. Like people have been making appointments when they're talking with me. Just, it's so nice to have a sounding board of someone that you can talk to before you make such a big move for your family. And I will give you all the information that I know of course, it's limited to what I know, but at least it's somewhere to start with someone that understands where you're coming from. If you're from the US or from North America in general, I can probably speak to the cultural differences and all of that. So anyway, in the membership, it's going to be really, really great. It's gonna be like, I've been working on it. I have it all outlined and so I'm excited to share it with you. It's gonna be like cultural training, like all the things you know need to know about moving here. How to go through the food store, how to, you know, how to get into schools, understanding the words, understanding what's okay and what's not in the job, in the job sectors. And like so many things that are like, that took me six years to figure out. <laughs> okay. And then still getting it wrong. Okay. <laughs> because even though it is not hard to integrate into this culture, like I said, and it isn't, and you don't need to do the training if you don't want, but like it's, there's a lot that you're missing. <laughs> if there's one thing I've learned being 
so so much exposure on social over the last two years all the things that i thought i understood i didn't quite or didn't realize that it's different in different parts of the country and that's sort of, so i've learned a lot i don't know everything but i can give you somewhere to start um you know just a lot of so it'll have like a lot of how to is a lot of exclusive content because i'm finding giving you all the information on my youtube channel is getting more and more difficult because certain information is valuable to certain parts of my audience and and so it's just not really working and they'll always be updated and i can give you very relevant i've had so many emails about the wellington protests and what's that and i've been to it and i've taken video and it just it doesn't really work as a broad audience thing but it would in my exclusive content it's something that i could show you and talk about and then you guys i'm happy for you guys to decide what you want to know like there'll be a spot where you can say like can you do something on this and then i can do it and share it with everybody and it becomes more useful all around and then a place where you guys can all chat with each other and be like oh well, you know but it's all like within a community of people so it really makes sense for people that are moving here probably are people that have already moved here from another country uh, if you're traveling for a long time like for a year and you want to understand the culture a lot of that would be helpful as well but it's just all basics i'm like getting set up and understanding how things work and you know there's really nowhere there's a lot of blog posts that i've been reading but they just kind of barely touch on anything so this is going to be very in depth in terms of what you can learn about new zealand and yeah so it's exciting so if you want to go to my website i have kind of a pop-up that says if you're interested in the membership just give me your email and i'll just let you know when it's ready uh, when it's available um, and it's also helpful for me to know if people are interested in something like that because i don't want to waste my time creating all of this stuff and then not anybody's really it's not that helpful i just think it will be really helpful to you when i'm talking with clients when i'm getting thousands of emails and i'm like okay like I just need to have a place where you guys can all be and I can give you all of this information. <laughs> and so, yeah, I'm very excited about it. So, so check out that if you are interested in that. But thank you for joining with me today. If you are moving to New Zealand, I am very excited for you. So please, at any point, don't hesitate to just email me with any questions you have. Please post comments about um, any more information that you'd like to know about moving to New Zealand. I'm happy to, I can give it to you or maybe do another video on that. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next week.